Hey everyone, this is Darren Benson with Performance Motor Coaches. Doing a video of our property up in Michigan, just right north of the state line. Someday we're gonna build a big RV storage here, but we're just too darn busy right now, which is a good thing. It's springtime, I've got a little bug that's going around me. It's crazy, so this is basically the fifth day of March. It's beautiful pretty much all the way across the country. We're still crazy busy in the coach business. Uh, we sold all of our classics, our in-stock classics. We only had two. Uh, this is our next available classic. Um, this guy is really bothering me, really bothering me. So uh, this is a CBF, which is our most common floor plan. It is a two bath bunkhouse. Uh, it does have a bunk over as well. One thing that is very cool and, uni and unique about this particular truck is this is the short hood Cascadia. Um, I'm typically not a big fan of the short hood Cascadia in a classic unless it has the DT12 transmission. So somewhat of a unicorn, uh, not too many of those built. Most of them will be the six speed Allison. To me, it's a rocket ship. We've driven, driven several of these coaches back to Texas and it is hard for me not to be driving 80 miles an hour. It just seems like the sweet spot on these is right about 75 to 80 miles an hour. So I said it is the short hood, so it's the DD. 13 so 12.8 liters and is coupled with the dt12 transmission so why do i feel like this is such a dialed in particular truck and my response is basically you've got daimler that owns detroit and owns freightliner and they basically design this particular truck engine and transmission all to be coupled together so pretty much all the fleet guys out there will run the dd13 some will run the DD15, but a really, really common motor is this DD13. I would say, the, without a doubt, the most common motor out there. Um, as far as the cab itself, no real difference in the cab other than just the hood. Now, if you're staring at the steps on a short hood versus a long hood, uh, the axle gets pushed back a little bit, which anytime you get the axle pushed back, you have a little bit tighter turning rate. So that's probably the, the biggest benefit beyond the engine transmission is it is a little bit tighter, sure, a little bit tighter turning radius due it just due to being a little bit shorter. And I feel I'm not done the math, but I really feel like it turns just a little bit sharper. The wheels basically cut left or right a little bit more than normal. So uh, this will be for somebody that still wants to pull, or that might maybe would potentially want to pull. Probably not the forty thousand pound plus, but if you're anywhere twenty, thirty thousand pounds, I really feel like this is probably one of the most dialed in trucks out there. On the market <clears throat> and as far as fuel economy probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a mile to maybe a mile and a half better fuel economy versus the 600 especially if you're comparing the 600 to the Allison uh, leaps and bounds over the 600 Allison to this DD 13 with the DT 12 so we'll talk about the outside uh, the Sun's going down so it's kind of hard to see everything so standard will be uh, all the black awnings we get the black profiles on the other side and we do have black slide toppers uh, i think it looks good with the uh, freightliner because you have a lot of black components to begin with if uh if we ever do a blackout package then all that stuff kind of ties in uh, we do all of our classic coaches we paint the top rail uh, which is aluminum extrusion the bad thing about not painting that is uh, it'll oxidize and you'll see all the black streaks so i think it's pretty cool to be able to take and do all that of course, 2023 was whenever they went to the mid-entry CBF. So it just kind of laid out a few things differently. Uh, combined storage compartment, 23 and newer, will be a, the combined compartment. Uh, we do have the bed line storage compartment. I bet you this guy is locked. Nope, it's not. 43 inch TV, so that's standard. Side swing baggage compartments are all standard and then the fully locking uh, so you'll have a key fob and the keypad all trimark system there it does have the aqua hot 450 you can option for the 600 but we've been doing a lot of the uh, a lot of the pressure washer uh, in this compartment the cool thing about that is you don't have to heat that um, as long as your aquat's running, that system will stay nice and warm. You don't have to do any kind of motorization. And we can fit basically everything in there. It's definitely tight, but we can fit, fit a whole deionized system, the power washer, and the hose reel all within that little compartment. The 
does have the uh, optional side turn signals. To me, this is kind of just a no-brainer. Uh, initially, they weren't offered on the XLs, and uh, now you'll be able to find them on the Classics and XLs. I wish they'd just make it standard. <clears throat> it's just nice to be able, if you're a car hanging out here, not paying attention, when that light turns on, it just kind of gets your attention at night, and generally will get the heck out of the way. So, three-quarter pass-through compartment right here is standard. Makes it nice to be able to put, you know, maybe some long ladders. We are working on a really nice uh, slide tray that is the lowest profile possible to be able to maximize all that. Be able to kind of be able to put, you know, small items underneath there uh, and back and forth. So central back right here, that is an option. That 25 will be standard. Uh, there is a 110 plug within that and some of the hitch assembly that comes all from the factory. Now, I don't have another example to be able to show you, but this is for people, for the true dialed in classic connoisseur, you're looking down this trim rail. This is a flat trim rail. This is what they've used on the Veronas, the Valencias versus the classic. Um, they never got away from the different trim rail that basically was like a hinged trim rail. And so it kind of sticks out a little bit. To me, this looks so much cleaner, nicer. And this particular piece is glued on versus a gazillion screws. Uh, for people that know about the classic and have heard of any kind of water intrusion, the more holes, the worse off you're at. So <coughs> you don't have to worry about all the gazillion holes down the side, everything glues together. So a little bit cleaner, nicer, tidier, um, and less likelihood of any kind of water intrusion, water damage. Of course, the signature back classic is essentially just a square box, no fiberglass rear cap. It does have the the Gen Y, you know, you, you hear lots of stuff back and forth on the hitch itself. So technically this whole assembly is rated at 40,000 pounds. However, this puts you down at 30,000 pounds. But most, most of our customers really aren't towing and pulling that much weight. It's just simply, if you drive a truck you probably won't get back into any kind of diesel pusher. Uh, the trucks are just great to drive. They don't fatigue you while you're driving, you know, five, six hundred, maybe a thousand miles. Come over here. So there's a 50 amp plug that's inside that compartment. The transfer switch is located inside. And then there is a 32 foot, I think I said 36 in the past, but it should be a 32 foot short cord reel. 12.5 generator is standard on anything tandem axle over 40 foot. Wet bay here. So there is a, a hydraulic register in anything from the LE up. In the wet bay, you do have 12 volt heat pads that go on the bottom side of each one of the uh, gray water, black water tanks. And then you do have the water hose reel right here it makes it really handy to be able to couple up and be able to use the pressure or to be able to take and fill the coach itself and then this is auto retract all of these will have a whole house water fil water filter system built on board and the black water flush this does have the optional macerator pump located within this compartment to be able to pump those out a little bit cleaner nicer way to get rid of your waste 75 gallons a piece and so if you've seen this exact coach in a the long hood cascadia because the fuel tank gets pushed forward this compartment gets slightly larger so on this particular coach right here the maximum number of batteries we can stick in this is three batteries with the dual Victron inverters, which I feel is more than sufficient for out boondocking, no problem running an air conditioner, keeping up while you're driving down the road as well. Do you have a little bit of storage underneath your chassis batteries? There again, if you were looking at a, like I said, uh, cab being the same, basically the 126, You'd be fueling about right here, and all this gets pushed forward, including the axle, just a little bit. 
60 inch bunk over overhead. We do a window on this side, and then we do a cabinet on this side. Gives you essentially a 60 by 80 inch long mattress. All right, let's go in and take a look on the inside. I like to start with the slides inward to give you a good idea of what you can and can't do with the slides in. So obviously right now, I can walk in and out of the cab. I can have a seat here on the dinette, basically get you anything I might need to get, including grabbing you know a beverage, snack out of the fridge, full access to the kitchen. Of course, same deal for your pantry washer dryer area here slip into a bunk if I needed to and then get into the full bath here so we're gonna run this slide out out right here this is, is a hydraulic slide you see how fast this guy is right here so all Lambright furniture in general, on our bunkhouses, we do not delete the overhead cabinets just because you know storage is a pretty good premium. Uh, but we do have some stuff coming down the line where we're going to, you know, eliminate one set of overheads for a larger cabinet. Or I'm sorry, a larger window there. This is a picture window. You know, obviously it doesn't open, but you still get some cross breeze by the time you open up this guy, these side windows, and then over here as well. And all the classics that I can figure will have a roof vent. The XLs do not have a roof vent. As of yet, I'm hoping we can get that changed in due time. So kind of go through the kitchen here. Uh, the TV is on a swing arm. It does have the sound bar and subwoofer down below. So decent storage. All of that overhead is the uh, Gerard controllers for the Gerard roof mounted awnings. Additional storage here and here. AV up there. That's only where we put take and put the Starlink. With storage underneath here all the electrical so the i would say that you know this basically the you know the 38 they all 38 to these 45s with the exception for the c uh cmr and the uh cbe have or cme um kind of have this same type of kitchen configuration so a little bit tighter there all the drawers are all soft close does have this little silverware drawer right here up top. In general, I don't like to recess the uh, the cooktop just because to me it's just another edge to have to contend with and kind of kind of clean up. Single basin sink, and I generally just do manual window shades all the way just because uh, the day shades will always be manual, and it just doesn't seem like I have achieved it in life where I have to do power on one versus the other. So just, just, just preference as far as kind of what I do on stock rigs. So three air conditioners. Uh, this does have the optional AC covers up top. Does have the optional overhead uh, access right there to be able to get on the roof. Um, like I said, the cabinet we talked about over on the right-hand side. And then like I said, still technically this is designed to come out. Don't really know anybody that actually takes them out. It's just nice to be able to have that much larger opening on board. Convertible dinette, so you can put basically a kid there. Theater seats, uh, we just find that most people uh, really don't like a couch. If you need this for seating, basically you can still put three people along that. And I guess odd man out in the middle doesn't get to enjoy the, the um, theater seat type effect. I'll run the rear slides out. So nice pantry setup. So there again, all the drawers are all soft close. And then just manual up top. I don't think I pushed that, went that bed all the way back. So stacked washer dryer. While I'm boring you, this is something to kind of check out that most manufacturers don't do. So they do that valve there. You can easily isolate your hot and your cold to your washer dryer. Just makes it kind of nice to be able to, uh, you know, if you did have something there again. Most manufacturers don't do anything like that. It's very difficult to access 
uh, you know, plumbing. They, it's just one of the cool things that Renegade does. It's air, condi air conditioner up top, and then third here in the back. So I would say life size or adult size uh, bunk beds here. So I can get in here and have a decent amount of room without hitting my head. And I generally do not option a um, any slip down TVs there, uh, just preference wise. Most people that if the kid can watch TV in bed, they generally will use a uh, an iPad, and they already have an iPad, so just preference wise. Decent sized room here in this full bath, given the fact that there's so much stuff in this, so. I can get in here. I can kind of do what I need to do. Of course, you know, keep keep in mind this is more of a guest bath, but I can do what I need to do and decent storage in every particular place. All macerator toilets, and there again, what I prefer on the classic over the XL is a little bit wider shower there. The master bed is 66 inches wide. You could do a 72 inch, you would just lose the two nightstands. And of course, it gets a little tight right here. So imagine pulling six inches out of this side, not nearly as big of a deal. Basically pulling, well, I guess six inches, you pull three inches out of each side. So a little bit tighter. So we generally find that the 66 is pretty much sufficient for most customers. Overhead storage, there is a 110 plug within that if you need to be able to plug uh, like a CPAP machine in there. We've done some some individual access doors going downward for customers. You do have a master control here. Turn every light off, turn it right back on. We'll get into the closet here. So cedar line closet. And big storage right here to be able to access your three-piece suit back behind. So drawers down on the bottom and then storage drawers, storage doors up here. Uh, this is your AV center. If a person wanted to be able to eliminate the AV center, then we could just add a simple door to it. Come back here to the master shower, obviously a lot more room. Uh, you don't have to worry about if you're standing, standing in front of the mirror, you don't have to be right up next to the toilet. So good room within this. Be very careful when I step in there. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of um, winterization fluid. I don't want to step in, but decent sized room here. I believe this is a 41 inch uh, wide, so relatively, or well, I guess from here to here. There again, decent storage all the way. All adjustable shelves within this. And the adjustable shelves within that guy too. And then another max vent. So basically you'll have a max air vent uh, in each bath in your kitchen air kitchen area too. So you have some doors to be able to isolate your master and then be able to isolate this uh, kind of bunk area right here. They're all basically just all a magnet type setup. They've talked about going back to like a like a plunger type system. We'll, so we'll see what 2025 provides. Really won't be too many too many differences in the 2025 versus what this is a 2024. Uh, it's going to be about July before we see any of the 2025s coming our way. Uh, of course, there'll be a little bit of price increase to go along with that. So if you're looking to get out before the summer hits and need a CBF, this will be our last 2024 CBF until we see some later on this summer. But uh, definitely a cool setup. It's kind of my go-to colors that I've done over and over and over. I can't tell you how many of these exact color coaches that I've sell, sold in this CBF configuration uh, throughout the last few years. And it just does, it's a good solid color that people, uh, most people can agree that they really enjoy. So I uh, don't think it'll take long to sell. Uh, we're, we will be moving it uh, to Texas tomorrow. And uh, so it'll be at the dealership at the end of the month. I'm sorry, the end of the week. Uh, we'll make sure the video gets tied in on the website so you'll be able to check out our website. It's pmcrv.com. And then most of our customers do come from uh, YouTube. So if you're obviously if you're just on YouTube versus the website, it's pmcrv.com. 
we have lots of stuff coming. We'll have a little bit of lull, uh, but yes, definitely it's, it's still a great time to buy a motorhome. There's really not that much inventory that's sitting out there. It's not like the diesel pusher world that overbuilt. And I would say more and more people are buying these things as people understand what they are. They have, have better resell, they're safer, uh, better floor plans, and just all in all, I feel like a better, a lot better built unit. So, uh, Always appreciate you guys coming out and watching the videos. Make sure you guys check out our website of inventory that's coming. If you have some direct questions about stuff that might be available in the next few months, make sure you guys give me a shout. Uh, just call the dealership and they'll relay my your relay your information back to me and I will give you a shout. Make sure you guys like, tag, and subscribe.